So I told uh, told the OBS to uh, start screaming uh, X-Plane, and it decides it was a good time to crash. <laughs> uh, oh, great way to start. Kidoki. Got everything in here? Yep, looks like I do. Get myself uh, situated here. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Now will this work? Yep, that's good. Uh, so can I connect? Come on. Okay. All right. Cool. Uh, yeah, everything should be good. All righty. Uh, let's see what we want to do here. I think I got everything, um, everything I need, I think. Oh, I guess we'll get to, get the plane started up. Let me get rid of this guy. So, we'll, uh, two brakes. Start my checklist. Test and set. Three fuel selector. Both. Four fuel shutoff valve. On, in. <laughs> Six beacon on seven avionics switch off eight master switch on nine throttle open one fourth inch ten mixture idle cut off a auxiliary pump on B mixture Rich until 3 to 5 GPH then cut off. C auxiliary pump. Off. 12 starter. Engage. 1 ignition switch. Start. 2 mixture, at engine start. Rich. 3 engine. RPM 1000 RPM. 4 oil pressure check 5 mixture lean max 6 flaps retract 7 avionics on 8 instruments GBP Not K EGBP EGBP Enter So elevation is uh, 433 That should be close. Let me get my last airport. Uh, EGBB search. Black space. BB. BB. Okay. So Birmingham. Okay. Sounds good. So for right now, uh, one more thing. Get a map going. It looks good. So, right now, I probably don't need the map. Well, it'll be good. Uh, let me think here a minute. Instruments. I think they're set. Set. One breaks. And we're good with you. So... Let me validate the flight plan. And file it. So 
So Pilot 8DC has a clue what's going on. So let's get fre some frequencies going on here. Info tower, that would work. So, I'll probably turn you back off. Won't need you right now. Looks like we got a flight plan in here. Yep. Okay. Say weather. Weather at Echo Golf Bravo Papa is broken. Visibility is unrestricted, winds are light, and variable cloud coverage is 2,000 scattered. 3,000 broken. Current altimeter is 3039er. Temperature 112.5. Okay, so it looks like we should be able to uh, get ready to taxi. So let's uh, do some checking here. And if I go on satellite, I'll do some cheating. I'm on a satellite image, and if I zoom in, you should see where I am. Yeah, that's about where I think I am. And uh, we'll find out the active runway. Say active runway. Arriving and departing runway 08. Okay. So I'll set my heading book to 08. 0678. <coughs> Cessna 6 Bravo Golf ready to taxi. Cessna 6 Bravo Golf taxi to runway 08 hold short runway 08. So, we're at least a parking brake. A little bit of fuel. Well, I guess we don't have to. Let's see where we're going here. Tells me I'm gonna that's A four. I'm gonna turn here. I gotta do something. <coughs> uh, I gotta do
Okay, back. Every once in a while, my chair decides that it wants to, uh, when I put pressure on the pedals, it decides it wants to roll. So I have a bungee cord I wrap around my chair and my wheel stand pro to prevent that from happening. Normally I don't have to do that, but today I do. And so it looks like I'm going to be on the on the grass here. And uh, that looks a little weird. Well, I'm just trying to figure out where I am on the map here. So it looks like there should be a taxiway here, but uh, yeah. Even though this is grass, this is supposed to be a taxiway. Something got a little messed up in the scenery. But I'm heading in the right direction, which is the important part here. I'm good enough. Cessna 6 Bravo Golf. Ready for departure? Cessna 6 Bravo Golf winds are light and variable altimeter 3039 are cleared for takeoff. Runway 08 Squawk 1200. this was the end of the runway but it's not so well, maybe it is I'll run up here a little bit just to be sure Displace threshold. Spin around right here.
So, it uh, looks like I just do a runway heading here. And, uh, we've got 29 miles to go. Yeah, taxi ways were a little weird there. Not sure I understand what, what's going on, but, uh, It could just be the uh, Orbex True Earth and the uh, and the airport in uh, X plane uh, just weren't weren't jiving. Kind of what it looks like. Alrighty. Um, I'll pull the power back here. We've got a 2200 and uh, try to get level. Stop on uh, on the journey today is Oxford. Get the right lights turned on that I should have turned on before I took off, but. So uh, odd, odd plus 500. So uh, trying to get level flight here at 1500. Because everything looks quite flat here. I don't see a mountain in the distance anywhere. Cessna 6 Bravo Golf, enjoy your morning. Frequency change approved.
21 miles and 12 minutes to uh, till we get to Oxford. Plane's fairly well trimmed out here. It's, uh, it's maybe losing altitude, not not very much, maybe 50 feet a minute, something like that. Easily correctable. We got a fairly level flight. I'm going to pop outside, take a look. Go in that case view. Kind of a different view of the scenery. The other thing I'm looking for when I do this is uh, not only just to enjoy the pretty scenery, but uh, to uh, just check for stutters and that kind of stuff. And uh, you know, now they can look down at them cars, and if you had stutters, you would see them. You would see it in them cars. As I'm moving along, they're moving in pretty much the opposite direction. And I don't see nothing. I mean, I see it just, this is smooth. We're a, we're a lover of VR. This is a great day. This really looks nice. This is as close as I'll uh, probably ever come in my lifetime to back, being back in a real airplane again. But even in a real airplane, I didn't get to experience this view. I was trapped in the cockpit. But in VR and a flight sim, I get to choose the view I get. It's pretty cool. A little bit off part, so I'm just trying to slowly, slowly turn the plane back on course. kind of just shimmered off on that. I'm gonna straighten it up a little bit. Yeah, I mean that's cool. in my VR cockpit. The great thing is, is that that's basically attached to my headset, kind of. Not really. It's, it's attached to kind of a position around my headset. So when I move my head, it doesn't move. So it's, it's like a physical, a three-dimensional position uh, to, my, to my left, to my right, and a little bit out from, uh, from where my headset is. So the advantage is, is that I can see my flight path. You can see how far it is to where we're going so I can judge whether I need to jump back in the cockpit. But the only thing I don't have is, is with me right now is, uh, is my throttles, my trim, my flaps, I don't have any of that out here with me. That's the only downside. But everything else I, I have, so I kind of know uh, 
I don't know like how how the flight's going. So. Yeah, look, I gotta lean in a little bit. See, so I'm 12 miles out, and it says that would be seven minutes. So, but uh, see, what are we doing here? So, <coughs> so running a high-end headset, uh, HP Reverb G2. Uh, you get right around between 35 and 40 frames a second. And the average is around 40, so. So everything is playing pretty nice today. from Oxford, I'm going to jump back in the cockpit. So 
basically when I was outside the cockpit I lost about 100, 200, about 250 feet. That really is not too bad. That was, that's a fairly well turned out airplane. But I'm going to have to get a bit lower here to kind of see Oxford. I might have to do some searching. Trying to level the plane off of around here, right about this side. Trying to leave the power where it is. Says it's a mile and a half. Uh, there it is. Not too bad. So I'm at 500 feet. Please go away. not rendered as well as I hope, but um, I'm pretty sure we just flew over it. There is some pretty cool architecture here. Oh. Wow. Okay. So, I'm going to see if I can spin around and uh, Come back through uh, outside the airplane. I'm just trying to uh, get uh, level here and uh, spin her on around. I can do this without crashing. So according to my map, Oxford is supposed to be right in front of me. And like I said, it may not be rendered as well as it is in Microsoft Flight Simulator, but uh, it says Oxford is right here, so. Okay. Cool. So, let me get figured out where I'm going next. So, my next track is three. So I'm gonna head this way. Yep. 
up my uh you can see my magenta line is showing up so i'm going to be going in the right direction uh, three two four so three hundred three two four would be right about here so how far we got to go uh, let me look looks like we got to go about six miles also looks like i got to give me a little bit of power to get up over this uh, little ridge here I'm going to turn a little bit to get, uh, kind of get back on the course. Yeah, we're good. to a palace and it's not too far away it's um, 4.5 miles away so it's not too far away Certainly nothing sticking out looking like a palace yet. Straight ahead, something's pretty big up here. That might qualify as a palace. 1.7 miles away, yeah, that's probably about the right distance. Pretty flat ground here, yeah. Okay, let's see what we can do here. Chase mode. Yeah, that would qualify as a palace. Pretty cool. That rendered fairly well. I mean, I, I easily saw that from uh, a couple of miles away, so. Not bad. Not bad. So. Let's figure out where we need to go next. So, next 
place is uh, Warwick Castle heading 343 so so a pretty similar a pretty similar heading and how far away is that oh it's close it's only three miles away so it's really close oh wrong answer uh, I got a top of descent uh, marker in here too, so I got to add that together. So actually, four seven. Actually, it's 27 miles away. But this is where my uh, my flight plan and my GPS and uh, my flight plan and pilot ATC are diverging. So where I'm going right now is to an uh, airport. And on pilot ATC, that airport isn't, isn't in its flight plan for some odd reason. So, so I'm going to this airport first, and then I'll be going to the castle. I'm not sure why that's true. I just know, I just been a kind of experiencing that, so. And uh, the airport, I, the airport I'm going to is EGIW, and when I look on Sky Vector, I don't find it. So more than likely, it's closed, and that's why it isn't showing up on Pilot Date DC, because it's not a, it's not an active runway, active airport. At least that's my guess. And even though I have a flight plane loaded into my uh, GPS here, uh, I'm not using it. I'm just hand flying. So, so I'm just looking at what uh, what track it says I should be on, and uh, trying to match that um, with the uh, with the oak. So it just kind of—it's just kind of like as a backup plan to, uh, you know, if you if you get distracted for too long, uh, and you're just using dead reckoning, you can you can easily get off course by quite a bit. So, so it's kind of like a good backup plan, you know, to to uh, have the GPS kind of uh, as a reference. But it still means that you're the one that's flying the airplane, so if you disregard the reference you'll be you'll still be off course. But the advantage is uh, it tells you how far you have to go. It's estimated uh, what it thinks how long it's gonna take you to get there from its estimation. So uh, so that's kinda helpful too. Because I've been trying to make these flights between an hour and an hour and a half. So it ends up being around a two hour or so stream. So. Yeah, so I'm recreating the uh, the flights that I did in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Uh, I did them in VR with basically the same setup. So I'm recreating them in X-Plane using uh, Orbex True Earth for the UK. And uh, and so far it's going it's going quite well. I'm 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 pretty happy. I uh, I went to load in live weather this morning and. Uh, 
I just didn't like what I, what I was seeing, so I kind of, uh, I kind of adjusted the weather just a little bit, not a lot, just a little bit. Um, it's kind of, if you're actually trying to, trying to see the scenery, if it's just constantly overcast and uh, low clouds, it's kind of pointless. <laughs> you know, you don't get to actually see it. So, so that's kind of what I'm trying to do is is actually view the scenery and uh, check performance and uh, to uh, so I can make my own judgment as to. Uh, I don't think I'd ever say that one one flight simulator is better than the other. They both have advantages and disadvantages, pros and cons. Um, as far as currently VR integration, uh, I've only flown two different flight simulators in VR. I've flown X-Plane and I've flown Microsoft Flight Simulator. As far as VR integration, as far as I'm concerned, uh, X-Plane wins that that contest hands down. X-Plane has had VR for three years. Uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator has had VR for what now a few months. That's a huge difference. And uh, so time will tell. Uh, as far as the the stunning scenery that you see uh, in uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator without doing any work. So in other words, you didn't download anything. It, it kind of comes out of the box that way. Um, now that, that wins. There's no doubt, no doubt about it. Uh, for me to get the scenery to look as nice as it does here, uh, I had to spend money. Uh, but I spent uh, about 100 bucks for Arbix True Earth for all of the UK. There's three different packages. And it totaled up around now. Um, but I'm happy with my purchase. And I'm getting hours of enjoyment. So that's kind of, that's worth something too. Okay, so it's supposedly we've got an airport coming up here kind of quick here. So it's about four miles away, so you would think if there's an airport in front of me, I would see it. But I don't, not yet. But it could be right, right there. A little bit high, so... And I like to look at these airports that uh, don't show up because most, most, like, most likely they are um, closed. So you'll generally see some uh, X's on the runway. So, other side of the hill. Ain't looking like a runway, an airport there. No, I don't see anything that says runway there. Gotta get a little bit higher here. No, I don't see anything that looks like an airport. <sighs> nope. So I gotta get up with this rise. I don't need to get real high, but I gotta get above it. That's some pretty odd scenery right there. So it says it's 0.7 miles. Okay, this kind of looks like a runway. It 
So let me get to the end of it where I would see an X. No X, but I don't see a runway right there. There's another one over there. Let me look at that one. Just trying to get myself enough power that I can do a pretty tight turn here and not, uh... Yep. No. There's a whole bunch of campers down there, though. That's kind of cool. Yeah. There is an airplane there. It almost looks like lighter stuff there, too, but, uh... Um, Okay, what heading do I got to be on here? So it looks like I got to be on a heading of uh, 341. So we'll just let her roll on around here. And um, so 341, it's a little bit the other side of north. So roll her back. Oh, it's heading for a little bit. Should kind of get me back on course here. So now it does say we're going to uh, Warwick Castle, and that is 12 miles away. Yeah, there was no airport there to land on. <laughs> Three, four, one. Yeah, it's right about where I'm at. So we're just trying to get some level flight here. Yeah, a lot of times you'll see like X's uh, on closed runways. You'll see X's, but uh, there was legitimately a plane there. It almost looked like glider. Um, what do they call them? Like glider trailers. You know where they put the they put the fuselage in and the wings kind of go on top of that. It almost looked like there were some of them there. So, but uh, nothing that legitimately looked like a runway. And like I said, it didn't show up on uh, Sky. Uh, And sky vector, so. Usually if you put an airport name in there and it doesn't show up, eh, it's probably not a real airport then. So, trying to get leveled off here at about 1,500 feet. Doing kind of a bad job. Uh, probably got a little too much power, so I'm just slowly trying to pull the power out a little bit. Trying to retrim the airplane. So I'm just shoving in on the yoke a little bit, and then just relieving that pressure. So I, uh, so at no time do I ever have any, uh, any. Ser I'm never holding any serious. Uh, pitch pressure on the yoke. Just not. Not how I play. So I will rotate the yoke. Uh, just trying to maintain, maintain heading. But as far as holding any pressure whatsoever uh, in the pitch direction, no. No, that's what trim's all about. So, let's 
so. Let's see what our airport has here. No? No, I don't want to close that with them. What did you do? reason that's uh I might not have a choice here. It's kind of a trying to figure out why. Well that's not what I wanted to do, but that's the only choice I was given. Get have a tab back. Well, thankfully it uh, remembered, whoops. Thankfully it remembered where I was. So all the way to there, it's uh, 327 feet. Got one runway. I took off an eight. I'm guessing I'm gonna be on 15, but we'll find out. Trying to get back on course here. I'm a little bit, a um, little bit low in elevation. Just low. I'm 100 feet, 200 feet low. Okay. So. We got three other attractions before we get to our airport, so so I should be able to uh, bring up the map. Three miles out. So I pull the power back a little bit. Good little. A little closer to the ground. It's like kind of a busy highway. Well, because we're in England, the carts are on the other side of the road. <laughs> Pretty cool. Pretty cool. So what do we see in there? A castle? Alrighty, so if it's a castle, I would think it would stick out a little bit. We'll find out. sure I got the plane kind of trimmed here. There was a castle, I missed it. I'm 
go back for another look. According to my map, it's like right here. Unless it's this. It could be. Yeah, it's got to be that right there. I don't see anything else that looks close. Oh well. So. Next place we're going, I gotta be on a heading of, uh... Go this way. Heading of 316. <clears throat> and both of my nav aids are a grand, so... That's a plus. And it's 18 miles away. So, 3-0. 3-10. Three fifteen. We'll call that close enough. Huh. That was a little disappointing, but yeah, it's okay. So I'm gonna turn a little bit to try to get me uh, kind of a little closer on course. I'll just try to intersect it. I fly out here a little bit, then I'll be able to turn it back to uh, 
Yeah, giving it just a little bit more power to kind of get up a little bit here. the heading I'm going on you can definitely see there is um, up in the distance there's a there's a skyline of, uh, of a city so I assume that would be Birmingham You could see that I'm 12 miles away from from it, and you could you could see it from that far away.
some kind of track down now. So what I'm not sure about is this point of interest, is it the town? Or is it uh, something in the town? I'm not I'm actually sure. I'm just trying to give it a little bit more power to prevent it from descending too much more. Haven't quite succeeded. I've slowed it down, but I haven't stopped it quite yet. It's straight in front of me. Since we went over it, so I think it isn't rendered well. Back in the cockpit. I go to a heading of 4-4. Uh, four, four. It's not too far away, so. reasonable and safe.
And you can clearly see that is the park. And that actually is rendered quite well. Yeah, that's good. So, I'm going to be on a heading of uh, 124. We're six miles away. Back in the cockpit. Heading 124. Cessna 6 Bravo Golf inbound to land. Cessna 6 Bravo Golf, good morning. Squawk 1200, enter pattern on a left downwind for runway 33. Call downwind. Okay, I don't need a map, I need information. Okay. 327 feet, so I need to be higher. I don't need frequencies anymore, I'm talking to tower. So I'm three miles away. Left downwind for runway 33, and I am on a... I am pretty close to that heading right now. So it would be good to see the airport before I'm right on top of it. So far, that's not the case. Nope, there it is. If I turn this way, are we gonna get better? Yes, we are. There's the airport. Not bad. Not bad at all. Probably don't need any power. Just need the plane to kind of slow down a little bit. And I'm on the right side of the runway to make a left-hand turn. So I am on the on the left downwind. Cessna six Bravo Golf downwind runway three three. Cessna six Bravo Golf call turning final for runway three three. Okay. on the lookout for the end of the runway here and looks like that white spot right there that's the end of the runway so uh, as long as I'm in the white arc I can uh, throw out no no so further out pretty good sized runway what do we got yep 7500 feet we got a lot of runway here alrighty Looks like it might be a displaced threshold by the looks of it. 
So I'm good here, so I'm going to put out one notch of flaps. Try to get the plane to slow down a little bit here. Pull back the power a bit. Just a bit. So I have my heading bug here in the bottom. So when I get to be uh, about 45 degrees out here, I'll uh, go ahead and uh, turn on my uh, turn on base. There's a little bit of haze making that uh, just a little bit of a challenge, but nothing serious. We're all good. Okay. Since it's a long runway, I should be able to turn in here. One more notch of flaps. Not too steep. Gonna bring it out. Lost the runway for just a little bit there. Cessna 6 Bravo Golf turning final, runway 33. Cessna 6 Bravo Golf winds are light and variable clear to land runway 33. Okay, turn on in. I'm definitely high. Happy say I'm about right. And that's a good feeling. It does look like there's a displaced threshold. means I'm not supposed to land on that. So, last night of flaps. Six Bravo Golf exit runway when able. I missed that taxi one. The one here? No, I don't see it. See any axes? So it wasn't an obvious um, taxiway uh, mar uh, line. Looking for general aviation parking. Uh, I don't think I'm over this way. Cessna 6 Bravo Golf, clear of the active. Cessna 6 Bravo Golf, welcome to Birmingham Contact Ground on 121.8. Have a good morning. <laughs> it's 
set COM1 121.8. COM1 set to 121.8. Crown Cessna 6 Bravo Golf, request taxi to General Aviation Parking. Cessna 6 Bravo Golf taxi to General Aviation Parking via taxiways Foxtrot, Alpha, Delta, hold short runway 15 and runway 33. I guess I'll have to guess. There are hangers over there. But the problem is that there isn't any legitimate taxiway signs. I mean, I can follow directions if I know where I'm kind of going, but at this point in time, I don't. See if I got a taxiway sign here. It looks red, so it's wrong. No. Hmm. I'm just gonna pick my own. I'm gonna go back here and uh, pick my own spot. It almost looked like there may be uh, general aviation parking on the other side, over there, but unless you have, uh, unless you have a uh, good taxiway signs, you can't, there's no way, let me, let me zoom in, let me see if I can see anything. More than likely, they won't be marked. Nope. Well, let's look at a different kind of map. Not that, not that. Not that. So. Foxtrot Alpha. Really? Come on. Foxtrot Alpha Delta. I 
moment, currently. Trot Alpha Delta. I don't see an Alpha here. Which would kind of help me figure out exactly where I am. Please move. Looking for a taxiway line. So this is Fox Trot. This is what you have to go through if the scenery isn't completely correct. And I still may fail, but I thought it was worth a try. That's golf. It said alpha. So I'm going to follow Foxtrot a little further here. So there are some signs here.
says they're supposed to be. So if I go right straight across here. That's not a six Bravo Golf holding short. Runway one five. Permission to cross. Cessna 6 Bravo Golf, this is Birmingham ground ground on 121.8, please repeat your request. Request cross runway 15. Aircraft calling ground, say again with your call sign. Cessna 6 Bravo Golf, request cross runway 15. Cessna 6 Bravo Golf, this is Birmingham ground ground on 121.8, please repeat your request. No, I will not. I tried to be nice. You wouldn't work with me, so I'm going across the runway. So as best I know, this is where I'm supposed to be going. Says I'm on Charlie. Before I go too much further, let's uh, take a little another look at the map. I think I gotta go that way. So, I need to make a left here. Because this does not look like general aviation parking at all.
Nothing, man. I should have come down Alpa here. Alpa Delta. So. like I did. How far does Delta go? Come on. Delta over and uh, cause it looks like that was the way I was supposed to go. I kind of made a, I got here a different way than I was supposed to. Let's see if there's something over here that, well I've seen was Truman also. Seems a little strange. gonna go over here. There's none of this makes any sense to me where I really should park. So I'm just gonna go over here and pick a spot. right here. I'll just pretend I'm a lot bigger airplane than I am. <laughs> uh, okay. Cool. Alrighty. Everything went uh, splendidly well. Got the flaps up uh, until we made it back here. Yeah, I was just trying to use this map to try to figure out where general aviation parking is and uh, it's just not obvious, and that's fine. Uh, it's all, uh, all this is all about learning. So, uh, uh, I think right now we'll just get the plane shut down and uh, turn off the avionics. Hold next to your back. Plane died. All the lights off. Everything is shut down. We'll call it a day. Yeah, that all went quite well. So, that's awesome. So, uh, 
not sure. Uh, I might stream tomorrow or maybe the following day. Not quite sure yet. Just uh, see what the world brings me. And uh, we'll kind of go from there. But uh, it's, it was a lot of fun. A um, couple of the uh, castles weren't rendered as well as I was hoping for. Uh, but um, hey, that's, uh, that's just the way it is. And uh, so uh, we'll... Uh, would certainly like to be uh, flying a Microsoft Flight Simulator, but until they... Uh, Resolve my VR issues. Um, as a streamer, uh, I just uh, no, I'm just not gonna stream it. I just won't. Uh, we'll see if they do a hot fix. Yeah, they may. They may wait till their uh, next update. We'll uh, we'll see how long that takes. I know I put in a couple of bug reports. See what happens. Alrighty. Without further ado, I'm going to call it a day. And uh, if uh, you like the content, uh, please click on the follow button so you know when I come live. And uh, without that, uh, everybody have uh, you just have a great day. And uh, I know I had a lot of fun today. It was kind of fun, kind of kind of trying to use a map and trying to figure out like um, where should we park. <laughs> Alrighty, we'll catch you guys later. Bye bye.